Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello there, you wonderful pet parent, and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. My name is Jessica. If you're new here, I hope you're not new here, though. I hope you've listened to a lot of these episodes and you just happen to love coming back to this podcast. But if you are new here, my name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. So today we're talking about tail licking, especially that licking and biting and chewing at the base of the tail. This is something that I wanted to talk about today because we're in the high, we're at the beginning of flea and tick season and most people, a lot of people, when their dog starts itching or scratching or biting or licking, they like immediately run to, oh my gosh, my dog has fleas. <laughs> and there are so many other things that could be going on. This is one of the most common areas that a dog will lick and there are so many and it lick and bite and chew. There are so many reasons why it could be going on, so I wanted to talk about it today. So when we think about tail licking, especially like right there at the base of the tail, there's, you know, licking, chewing, scratching, biting. That's not an area that's easy for your dog to scratch at. So, you know, licking and biting is kind of their go-to for that area. And yes, um, it could be fleas. <laughs> and a lot of dogs that have fleas will bite and chew and, and lick in that area because that's one of the areas on a dog that fleas do like to kind of congregate. Um, around the neck and shoulder blades is another one. So yeah, if it, first of all, everything we're talking about on this list for the most part, not everything, but most things on this list that we're going to be talking about today, we should get our dog into the veterinarian. So if this is a persistent problem, if your dog just seems to like not be able to stop licking, chewing, biting, any for any area of their body, but today we're talking about like the base of their tail, then we, we need to get in to see the vet because there are a bunch of different things that could be going on. Now, if you are like seeing fleas, okay, we've talked about handling fleas and, and ticks and pests in other episodes. So I'm not going to go over that today because I have done some pretty extensive episodes between the podcast and the uh, video channels in the past, as well as on Patreon, uh, which just, by the way, if you are not a Patreon supporter, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go to the petparentingreset.com. And then at the top in the navigation bar, there's a link to Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. And what happens is you are, first of all, supporting um, this podcast. For me to be able to continue putting this podcast out um, is not free to do so. I put a lot of time, energy, and money into this. So um, supporting the podcast for as little as a dollar a month to continue to put content like this out to you and other pet parents, as well as the other content channels such as YouTube, Rumble, um, Facebook, Instagram, all the, all the things. So and and to get those free uh, courses out to you guys. So I don't know if I've even mentioned this on the podcast before. Um, I usually mention it on the video channels. But if you go to my link tree, which is something that you will also be able to find at the PetParentingReset.com, there is currently a free beginner dog training series course available to you. It is normally $199, but this is a 19 video series and uh, all you have to do is put in your email address so that I can send you login details. It is password protected because this is not available to just anyone. Um, I I did give it to uh, every one of my Patreon supporters gets this as well. So uh, if you join Patreon, you, you'll have the opportunity to, to uh, sign on for the beginner dog training series there as well. 
Uh, it's a 19 video series and it goes through a lot of the biggest <laughs> basics. What was I saying? Basics, which is why it's called the beginner dog training series. And then at the end, we talk a little bit about nutrition because anybody that has listened to me for any length of time knows that behavior and diet are very, very correlated. They, um, are, are no, in no way separate, right? We, I, I look at the whole dog. And the whole cat. But anyway, I digress. Um, so I, I do hope to see you over on Patreon. I do hope you you join over there again for as little as a dollar a month. But I have done a lot on flea and tick and, and even heartworm um, in the past. So I don't want to go through all of that. But if you do find, if you, if you do notice fleas on your dog, which can actually be sometimes kind of difficult to uh, uh, find you if you're not like seeing these little things jumping around that doesn't mean they're not there so that is the first place our minds go and and rightfully so it, it could be an issue that said whether you're seeing the fleas or not do reach out to your holistic veterinarian um, I again have given tips and tricks on and things that I do to keep my dog pest free um, naturally. I don't love the uh, flea and tick medications that are available. They are uh, neurologics, meaning they attack the nervous system, not only of the pest, which is the goal, but also of your pet. And there have been a lot, a lot, a lot of negative side effects. So, okay, yes, it could be fleas. And there is something called flea allergic dermatitis that uh, some animals can get. So they can actually be allergic to the bites of fleas, to the saliva um, of fleas. So they can be intensely itchy, lose hair at the base of the tail or other areas of the body, have red patches on the skin, multiple um, small scabs from the flea bites. That is what is known as flea. Uh, those are symptoms of flea allergic dermatitis. But definitely um, reach out to your veterinarian. Another thing that could be going on, and again, another um, we need to get to our veterinarian issue, is that your dog, if they are incessantly licking, biting, chewing at the base of their tail, they could be having anal gland issues. And while feeding a species-appropriate diet is not a 100% cure-all for anything, even um, anal gland issues, it can help. Um, quite a bit, especially once if you're if you're feeding a commercially available, um, balanced, species appropriate diet, then you're probably good to go. And many dogs won't have anal gland issues. If you're doing a DIY, you're probably going to have to kind of balance out the right amount of bone um, and, and and all the things first of all to get it balanced for your dog, but to get there. Uh, poop, right? <laughs> because naturally for a dog, um, when your dog defecates, when they poop, <laughs> um, I don't know why I can't say that word without laughing, but anyway, um, that as long as the consistency is appropriate, which is why feeding a species appropriate diet is so important, as long as the consistency of their poop is what it's supposed to be that will naturally express anal glands so when we have a dog that has anal gland problems um, anal gland issues one of the first things we do want to look at is diet but um, especially if your dog is constantly licking their hind end and maybe even also scooting on the floor then that's a very that's a huge red flag that okay there may be anal gland issues going on here so if you've never heard about this before and you're like, what are anal glands, Jessica? Like they, there are, they are what they sound like they are. Um, sometimes they're called anal sacs. They're anal glands. They're on either side of your dog's anus. <laughs> um, they are two small scent glands. They're kind of located just below and on both sides of the anus. They contain a very strong, fishy-smelling liquid, um, sometimes a paste, that helps dogs to mark their territory. Most dogs empty them naturally when having a bowel movement. However, some dogs need help expressing them. So here are some signs that their your dog may be having anal gland issues. Maybe their anal glands are full. They may be licking their hind end, um, biting at the base of their tail, scooting on the ground, straining to defecate, and there may be a fishy odor coming from their rear end. So 
This is, again, something that you do want to address with your veterinarian. I do not... There are some people who will express their dog's anal glands on their own. I think that is kind of a slippery slope uh, because, first of all, if your dog is needing to have their anal glands expressed manually, that needs to be addressed. Um, Again, I'm a very big proponent for not putting uh, Band-Aids on symptoms. That this is telling us that there is, this is a symptom of an underlying issue. And for me, that starts with diet. It may not be a hundred percent diet. So I would recommend reaching out to a holistic veterinarian. Um, so they can at least get you on the right path. If it isn't just, oh, I'm going to put my dog on a species appropriate diet and it's going to fix everything. That's not always the case for some dogs. Yeah. That's going to fix a lot of stuff. It's, it's a great place to start. And in fact, the easiest place to start and where I always recommend starting and, but it's not always, you know, going to fix every issue that your dog has for various reasons. So, um, when we express anal glands manually, first of all, there's a, a right way to do it. And there are a lot of wrong ways to do it. And it can, it can irritate the anal glands if it's not done appropriately which can create scar tissue in the anal glands. And as that scar tissue builds up from continual manual expression, we can wind up with some much more serious issues. Um, I actually, Gracie, our chihuahua, she uh, was actually my husband's dog when I met him. She ended up later on in life having some anal gland issues And they did actually correct themselves as we got the hang of a species appropriate diet. For a while, I was taking her into the veterinarian's office um, monthly to get them expressed for for a short period of time. Um, And this was years ago when I was learning about all of these things. And she, she, you know, she went through some Uh, some stuff that was pretty traumatic for her little body. So for her, fortunately, um, getting her on that species appropriate diet made all the difference. So that's why I say it really is, it really is something that um, you need to work with a holistic or integrative veterinarian um, to make sure that once we get the diet straight, if there are any con- continuing issues that they can be addressed as well. So the third reason, um, not a very good transition, but <laughs> the third reason that your dog could be constantly itching, biting, licking at the base of their tail is um, allergies. These could be food allergies. These could be environmental allergies. So, you know, dogs get allergies just like we do, and they can have both sensitivities and allergies to foods and things in the environment. So food allergies are going to be something that you're going to see year round, right? This is something that isn't going to go come and go seasonally. Um, environmental allergies may be something, well, especially if they are related to, you know, pollen, dust, ragweed, grass, things like that. Um, they can be seasonal. Now, allergies or sensitivities to um, perfumes, chemicals, cleaners that you may be using, um, laundry detergent, fabric softener in, that you may be using in your home, of course, that's not going to be seasonal either. So there are lots of different areas <clears throat> in which we want to address. Um, I've gone over so many of these in the past that I don't want to just fill up time saying the same things over and over. But of course we want to be as organic as possible. I don't use chemical cleaners in my home. Um, when we go outside, if we have my dog and I, we, we, well, (laughs) I say my dog and I, my husband, my cats, my dog and I, we all, my family moved, uh, last year we moved from, so we started out in Virginia. We lived in California for a bit and now we've moved to Texas And I have noticed in the past month or so, have uh, a little bit longer now (laughs) because I've recorded this a little in advance, that 
my dog and I are experiencing seasonal allergies that we hadn't previously experienced. These have just been coming on recently. And for me, she hasn't been licking or biting at her tail. She has been licking her paws a little bit more lately. Um, but I was hyper aware of it because I'm experiencing uh, seasonal allergies, which I am not used to. So you're pro- you might even be hearing it a little bit in my voice. Um, I'm not used to these seasonal allergies. So I have recently started incorporating bee pollen daily in her food and in my tea. Um, so that's kind of where I'm starting with that. But these are things that can be leading to your dog licking, biting, chewing the base of their tail and other areas um, around their body, their feet is another really, really big indication of that. But again, it could be food. It could be a lot of things we need to, there's, we need to put everything into perspective. Has this been going on for a long period of time? Did it just start with a change of the season? Like there's a lot going on. Um, did anything else in the home or around your dog change around the time these symptoms started? So we need to put all of this into perspective to see what, is actually going on with our dog, but that is another reason. The other one is contact dermatitis. Again, this is something of an allergic response. If you have ever walked through a patch of weeds and noticed within a few minutes that your feet or legs are itchy, that is contact dermatitis. And this can also happen to your dog. So Contact dermatitis is similar to allergies, but is a more localized response. It occurs when something irritating touches the skin. The irritating substance could be grasses, plants, carpet, soaps, shampoos, um, anything really that is new and different that um, has your dog has come into contact with. As a result of the irritant, the irritant, a local allergic reaction occurs. That is contact dermatitis. So. This is usually going to result in red, itchy skin, possibly even hives if it's a severe uh, allergic response. Contact dermatitis can occur anywhere on the dog's body, but is most likely, uh, because they're so low to the ground, it's most likely going to be on their abdomen, their feet, around the tail, their rear end. If your dog's face comes into contact with the irritant, his or her eyes may be red and watery as well. So if you suspect your dog has contact dermatitis, maybe you just went on a hike and now they're all itchy, <laughs> um, we want to get that area clean. Uh, wipe the irritated area with a warm, wet washcloth. Give your dog a bath. Of course, I know I've talked about this before. I love four-legger shampoo, and then I will also add in animalia oils depending on what, these are veterinary-grade essential oils, depending on what my dog needs at that moment. Um, You know, if the bath, if cleaning your dog up helps, then you're probably good. If it doesn't, you're going to need to get into your vet. Now, if their eyes become irritated, um, you can do a uh, an, an eye rinse for your dog. I would recommend... Um, consulting with your veterinarian about that. Um, you want to be very, very uh, aware that not, I mean, some, you can do, you know, a water rinse. Um, I, I wouldn't mess with your dog's eyes too much. I, again, I'm not a veterinarian. I don't like to mess with my dog's eyes. I leave that to the veterinarians. So if you feel like your dog needs um attention to their eyes. If they've gotten into contact with something on their face and their eyes are red and puffy and swollen, get into your veterinarian as soon as possible. Because the eyes are, you know, uh, this is all a very sensitive area (laughs) on your dog's face. Um, If your dog's eyes are red, puffy, swollen, swollen, that could be an indication of something else going on in their um, sinuses, in their throat. We don't know. Get into the veterinarian as quickly as possible. Of course, any of these can also result into hot spots. So if we're talking about allergies, contact dermatitis, um, even itching, biting, licking too much for fleas, um, or even anything we're getting ready to talk about, this can all lead to your dog having a hot spot. Um, these are actually, we've talked about hot spots in the past. They're, they're painful, they're sore, they're irritated areas of um, irritated skin, very painful, often red. They can 
also often develop secondary infections. So they're going to ooze moisture and pus, sometimes even blood. Um, again, we've talked about hot spots in the past. There are some at home remedies. I think I did a video on this as a matter of fact, so check YouTube or Rumble for that video. But if it doesn't clear with your at home remedies within a couple of days, like two days max, then we need to get into the veterinarian because there is a very serious um, threat of secondary infection when hot spots occur. So let's get on with our list. All right, so the next thing on our list is internal parasites. Yummy. <laughs> no, this is this is nasty, and I get that. Um, not only could your dog be licking and chewing at the base of the tail due to external skin problems, but there actually could be internal causes as well. One reason might be that your dog has internal parasites. More specifically, worms. The most common worms of concern are roundworms and tapeworms in our dogs. So roundworms are usually passed from mother to dog's to their puppies are acquired when dogs ingest wildlife or feces of other animals. Tapeworms, on the other hand, are passed to dogs through ingesting fleas or consuming an infected prey species, such as rabbits. If your dog is excessively licking and chewing at the base of the tail and diagnosed with fleas, it is likely that your veterinarian will want to check them for tapeworms as well. So the most common diagnosis of worms is that worms are going to show up in your dog's feces. So round worms are going to look like spaghetti noodles. Tapeworms are going to look more like pieces of rice. Um, I would recommend having your veterinarian test a fecal sample just in case um, because you may not be able to see them. They may be inside of the poop and you may not want to look at that. <laughs> um, but your dog will often react and act as if their rear end is itchy. That's a common symptom with worms as well. Um, your dog might be scooting on the floor, nonstop licking, chewing at um, her tail, her hind end. Dogs with worms may also experience vomiting, diarrhea, and weight loss. So you definitely um, want to get with your veterinarian about worms as well. Again, I always recommend holistic and integrative veterinarians. So the next reason on our list is hormone imbalances. So hormone imbalances, well, okay, when we think of hormones, the first thing we think of are sex hormones, right? But we actually have lots of different hormones responsible for lots of different functions in our bodies and our dog's bodies. And some of those play a role in maintaining healthy skin and a healthy coat for our dogs. So there are other hormone-related conditions like Cushing's disease, diabetes, mellitus, um, and hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism. I hope I said that clearly enough. Hypothyroidism. So I recently published a video to YouTube and Rumble about glyphosate and how glyphosate is an endocrine disruptor. Our endocrine system is responsible for our production of hormones. These are also things that can be happening because of exposure to chemicals, um, specifically glyphosate, which is most commonly known as Roundup, though glyphosate is actually in hundreds of products now because the patent for glyphosate expired years years and years ago so it's in hundreds of products now um it's a very very common i highly recommend you go check out that video it is um oh gosh what's the title of it something about this toxin is 30 times higher in dogs than humans i think that's the title of the video anyway that was the intended title of the video <laughs> i didn't publish it that long ago so you're not going to have to search that hard for it but um, yeah, so hormones control everything pretty much in our body. Um, so we're going to see skin and coat issues. We're going to see um, rough uh, coats, patchy coats, maybe even bald spots. So when a dog has a hormonal imbalance, a hormonal disease, other signs that you might also see with this are decreased energy, um, which you're veterinarian may call lethargic, increased or decreased appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, 
increased thirst and or increased urination. So if you if your dog fits any of these, you definitely want to discuss all of this with your veterinarian. Um, hormone related diseases can be life threatening, so we we for sure want to get on top of this as quickly as possible to see what we can do about getting the endocrine system back in order. Of course, we want to um, avoid as many chemicals and toxins as possible. We may even want to detox our dog. You're going to need to talk to a holistic veterinarian, an integrative veterinarian, maybe even consult with a homeopathic veterinarian. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that can go into that and we certainly want to get on top of it. So, all right, what's the next one? Pain, pain is the next one. So one of, you know, our, our pets, tell us when they're in pain, but they can't tell us when they're in pain. I hope that makes sense because they're not speaking English to us, right? But there are things that they do that let us know that things aren't right. And this, you know, itching, scratching, biting, chewing, licking, especially incessantly is an indication, um, can be an indication of pain, especially, this is especially true in our senior dogs. So first of all, licking that the act of licking, this is why we use licky mats with our dogs. The act of licking is um, an anxiety reliever. It's a stress reducer. It can help calm our dogs. So your dogs will naturally do this to help comfort themselves. So licking an area that, hurt, that hurts can be comforting to a dog. Um, it's kind of like how you or I might massage an area on our body that hurts. So they're that they might also lick a painful area because their first instinct is to try to clean a wound. Um, they can't always determine though, if a wound is external, like a cut or internal, like joint pain. So they'll commonly lick a painful area, even if that pain is coming from the inside. So again, you will want to reach out to your veterinarian for this, especially if you're like, your dog is just licking and you're like, I can't figure out why it could be, um, it could be pain and it could be an internal pain. But again, this could, this licking, this incessant licking can lead to hot spots, which are also very painful and can lead to secondary infections. So we want to, we want to get on top of this as quickly as possible. The next uh, reason on our list could be a behavioral problem or anxiety. So, Excessive licking can be a sign of behavioral issues or anxiety problems as well. Some dogs will overgroom themselves out of boredom, so we need to be providing enrichment for our dogs. Um, initially, it starts out as normal grooming behavior, but then it becomes a habit that the dog performs when there is no other stimulation. So they're bored out of their mind, and now this is all they know to do. Um, this is actually very similar. It's the same reasoning if you have a very high energy dog and they destroy ter toys or furniture because they're not getting enough exercise and playtime. It's the same thing, only instead of destroying things, they're, they're destroying their own body, basically. So um, if your dog does have anxiety, there could be other symptoms. These symptoms include uh, panting and restlessness, decreased sleep, excessive whining or barking, pacing, uh, destructive behaviors, eating too fast, fears of loud noises. So anxiety comes in many, many forms in our dogs and some are more obvious than others. But if you suspect your dog has anxiety, there are, there are so many things we can do. Of course, Reaching out to your holistic veterinarian is going to be one of them, but we certainly want to improve their quality of life. We want to provide them more opportunities for exercise, both physically and mentally. And oftentimes that mental exercise can be as important, if not more important. We certainly never want to leave out physical exercise unless there's something medically um, going on with your dog that they can't get the physical exercise. But um, that mental exercise can be as important, if not more important to our dogs, especially when they have anxiety. So, um, we've talked, I know I've talked about this so many times. And again, I'm going to reference you back to Patreon. I've done many posts on Patreon, um, about 
anxiety about um, giving your dogs a job, lots of lots and lots and lots of things um, that can get you started in the right direction if your dog does have anxiety. So with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. And it gives you a lot to think over. It gives you a lot to <laughs> chew on, as they say. And I really hope that of course, some of these some of these reasons can be quite scary, but also empowering because knowledge is power. So take everything into consideration, your dog's mood, behavior, their eating, their drinking, their, you know, how they're pooping, their urination. Um, if something new has come or gone in the house, if you're using something new, if you're, um, I don't know, even burning a new can. I mean, there are so many things. Is the season changing? Um, did somebody recently come into or leave the house? Uh, I, I mean, so, so, so many things could be going on. Um, but for most of these, we are going to want to consult with our veterinarian. So with that, I do hope today's podcast episode was helpful for you. Um, if you have not already, I hope you rate the podcast wherever you are listening to the podcast, whether that is Spotify or Apple or Google or wherever else you may, be get, you may get your podcast from. And if you're not already following the podcast, I do hope you do so. And I know I've mentioned it more than once on today's episode, but I do also hope that you check out Patreon. Um, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. And that really, really does help me to continue to bring content to you because it is actually quite expensive to um, keep all of this running. So with that, I want to help you and your pets as much as possible. And of course, I'm not there in your home with you. So this is the best way I knew to do that. Um, reach out to me on the socials. If you have comments, if you have questions, I would love to hear from you. And who knows, maybe your question uh, will get answered in a new podcast episode um, or maybe even a new YouTube or Rumble video. Who knows? Um, but with that, I'm going to end today's episode. Please give your pets some extra love from me. And until next time, bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.